Knoxville, so they, the only option they have is war. But, like, what about when there was a ceasefire, kind of, before October 7th? No to genocide. There, before October 7th, there was kind of a ceasefire because they were still shooting rockets regularly in yeah. Israel. Yeah, and then there was so, a provocation oh, yeah, of the occupation. Israel waste, like, uh, 50K today. Like, just yes, but there was a provocation, the occupation of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And Hamas said, do not do this. If you do or this, there will be re repercussions. That will have no effect on your country. We'll just get exploded in the sky. You're, you're both simplifying a little because with the October 7th attack, Hamas is planning that for like two years. And uh, yeah. meanwhile, Israel is actually letting Gazans in as like uh, day workers. So, yeah, about 40, 60,000. And a lot of them allegedly were spying for Hamas. So you can argue that, you know, Israel was at least like trying a little bit and Hamas took advantage of that. Um, took so advantage of what? Well, the fact, the fact that, that the borders were looser. And, like, so they used the day but they were being exploited. Well, they did. They were helping to build, you know, Israeli infrastructure. Well, it's not really that. And got paid a miserable like wage. When, when you look and at and also, Hamas, when, you know, when you look at how Hamas and Gaza, view, they would say like, "Hey, we can't fix everything today, but we can help them earn some money and get a well, job." That's not why they're doing that. They wanted, you know, cheap labor. That's it. That's all. Well, and also from the West Bank, 160,000 are imported every day. I saw them get picked up in a big white van with Israeli license plate. And they come back, you know, at, at uh, 5.30 after getting up, you know, at 4 o'clock in the morning. And, and then they get, you know, like cheap labor that way too. And they even use Palestinians in the West Bank to build the settlements. Sure. Well, you know, 40,000 used, you know, to build, you know... A of settlements on land that, that came from Palestinian villages. I think you can look at it really pessimistically and say the Israelis are exploiting uh, the Palestinians, but you can also be a little more charitable and say, look, there's no solution tomorrow, but maybe they can, because there's a lot of Israelis that have been trying over the past, like, 25 years or so to work out economic deals. Like, maybe if we build up Ramallah, they won't care so much about uh, East Jerusalem as their capital. So you can look at it cynically or you can look at it sort of uh, optimistically and charitably. Of course there's a lot of good Israelis. Sure it's a little bit in the middle. You Rabin, know, so. you know, the Prime Minister even tried to make peace you know, and he was assassinated for it. Yeah, see, that's another thing you agree on. He was a great man. Netanyahu sucks. And they're definitely not going to elect him in the next election. His whole shtick was he, he'll provide security and needs to get the war going to provide that security. And without if without a war, he won't get elected. Also, the gas is worth a uh, hundred billion dollars. Yeah, but again, I'll, I'll go to my first point, which is if they if they were at peace, they would have worked out a deal. And so I feel no like deal that belongs to Gaza. It's only you know in, in Gaza territorial mean, waters. Israel like, has okay, no rights, you know, way. to share in that. Canada has tons of natural gas, and the U.S. is telling Trudeau, "Hey, you got to start selling us that gas. We want the gas." And Trudeau's like, hey, "It's tough." Right? Now, if Canada and the U.S. weren't friendly, the Americans have a big military. They might come into Canada and say, uh, we got to annex the land. It's a national security issue. We want the gas. But because we're so friendly, they're willing to say, like, all right, we can wait a couple of years and figure it out, Trudeau, and get us the gas eventually, or if not, the next prime minister will. So it's probably something like that where if Israel do think it No, us, it's not a shared it. gas field. It's just offshore from Gaza and not know, offshore from Israel. Gas. I, that's really nothing... The war has nothing to do with that. What is it then? The Ben Gurion Canal? Because they want to put it through they don't Gaza? They more territory. They, they would be happy if Egypt took Gaza. Then why are they? Doesn't want it why are the real estate agents there starting to sell lots on the on the seashore, you know, in Gaza to sell to Israelis? You know, or na naive enough, you know, to buy. I, I would say this is uh, there's a lot of things that the uh, like the extremists in Israel do that yeah. you should find objectionable, and you should be able to say like, yeah. You probably shouldn't be uh, dividing up Gaza as we speak. It's uh, <laughs> in poor taste at the very least. <laughs> but I think you have to look at the whole history and you realize that, you know, the Israelis and the Palestinians, they've never really wanted to work out a peace deal. All they really wanted up until 1995 was a, can, you know, can each side just buzz off? Just leave me alone. That was really what they were trying to work towards. It wasn't going to be a friendly peace. It was going to be like, you stay over there, I'll stay over here. We don't want to talk to each other. Uh, you know, you, that, that's uh, not, that's just speculation, you know. I don't think so. Well, the International Court of Justice says I do. No to the occupation, yeah. My friend, it doesn't help to talk to people like that. We're trying to have a conversation with him. Like he
Yeah. See, he doesn't have any reason for it for saying what he thinks. He's only learned, you know, certain formulas by rote, you know, that have become cliches. If you can uh, humor me with an example from my family. <laughs> so my family got ethnically cleansed from Lithuania back uh, in the 40s. And, uh, Same with my parents and family, family in Poland. My, my family's from Lithuania. From where? Af Lithuania. Lithuania? Yeah. Lutwaken. My pa I don't know any word in Lithuania. Yeah, in Yiddish, it, your, your, your community is called the Lutwaken. I remember my, parent, my mother referring to that. So, my grandfather got out before they killed the rest of his family, right? Yeah. And they, you know, like three brothers, everybody else is gone. Uh, my grandfather never went back to Lithuania, but he was never a refugee. He was in South Africa, and he built up a business, started a family, you know, had my dad. And so uh, he never considered himself a refugee, and he never ever, once in my life at least, said, we got to take back Lithuania, or they stole our farm, we got to... His only thing was he said, I don't like them, I don't want anything to do with them, they can go be in Lithuania, I don't ever want to see them again, right? So, that's very easy for my grandfather to do, because he had a business, he had citizenship in South Africa, he was doing well, right? Uh-huh. And if I went back to Lithuania today and I started killing Lithuanians and said, this is the land I want back, I'd be rightly seen as a psychopath. Yeah. But that's because I'm a Canadian citizen. You know, I'm doing well for myself. Um, if you look at the Palestinians, you can take what they say at face value, which is the land was stolen, and then you can get into really semantic and pedantic arguments about, well, you were renting, or you leased, or you weren't the owner, or the owner was in Saudi. No, no, and that was only a, sm a small percentage, you know, of, of, of matter. But, but this, 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 this current, you know, assault on Gaza, an expulsion, genocide of the Palestinians demonstrates the truth of what the Palestinians said about 1947-49. They were violently expelled. The Palestinians don't have citizenship. And, and 5,000 are still... Yeah, they don't have citizenship in the countries in which they live. Right. And by the way, Palestinians don't have citizenship in Jordan. They don't have citizenship in uh, Lebanon. So they're really... Forget Israel for a minute. They're screwed everywhere. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. If I was a Palestinian who was 20 years old, and I didn't have a citizenship in any country, yeah. didn't have any money, didn't have a job, didn't yeah. have resources. And the, my whole life, my grandfather was saying, those guys over there, and remember, the distance between Gaza and Tel Aviv is like, Laval to Montreal, it's nothing. Yeah. Well, I would internalize that. I'd be like, yeah, they did steal. I wouldn't talk about the semantics of, well, was my grandfather renting, or how much land exactly? All I would know is they stole my land, right? And so making those arguments or countering those arguments isn't really productive because the core issue is, well, they don't have anything, and they're going to latch onto anything. There was no Palestinian national identity until the 1960s. Um, you might have said there was a regional identity, and that's very fair, but well, there was. the fact is that they're latching onto whatever they can, and so when we you know, get into this kind of argument, it doesn't really help either side. What, what would there was, a, you know, Palestine under British occupation. They had their own passport, they had their own money, you know, like, of course it, it existed. Never, it was never Palestine. I even have a reproduction of, of, of one of the monies, you know. This is what it should be. See? Here it says, Palestine, and then it says in Hebrew the same thing, and in Arabic. So it's bilingual. This should be a federation. Well, Israel is, I wrote a whole book about Israel, that. It's in the library there. Federation of, of Palestinian Hebrew what would, if nations. You, if you were the Prime Minister of Israel and they just October 7th just happened, what would you do? Negotiate the release of the hostages. Well, you can't do And they refused at first, and then finally they had to because of the protests. And they could do so again, but they're not. They wouldn't, they wouldn't respond to that. They did already. They released half the hostages. Yes, because of because they because they, they you know some Palestinians were fired, released. They would if if the Israel truth. ever attacked them in the first place, there would be no ceasefire to offer, and there would be no leverage. Um, like like what I think to save a lot of the. You I, mean you want to have peace? Okay, theory, fine. But there's no my, peace. My it's a situation. state of war. So one side attacks, the other side attacks. You know, and so that's what war is. I think Egypt should have had a big part to play in this, and Egypt and uh, Israel could have said, "Hey, Egypt, if you." Egypt if you, warned if you Israel that the attack was coming. <laughs> like, we'll promise to let them back into Gaza if you take on to refugees temporarily, so they don't die, and we can, and then we can take out all Hamas's weapons storage stuff and their rocket launch centers, and then like they bomb for a bit, then send in special ops. Because, yeah, Israel cannot be trusted reasons, to do so. Well, there's two reasons. One is. Uh, the rest of the world doesn't really trust Israel not to, uh, you know, 
that in after, but also realistically, the Egyptians don't really like the Pal I mean, maybe the Egyptian people, but the Egyptian government has no love for the Palestinians. Because didn't and someone assassinate their leader? Yeah, Black yeah. September, they tried to assassinate the president. 